Today I'm going to give you four exercises that will help decrease your runner's knee pain. Now runner's knee is basically pain around the kneecap or under the kneecap and it usually doesn't come on traumatically or all at once. It usually is that gradual increase in pain as you increase mileage or as you increase speed. Basically what's happening with the knee is the biomechanics of the kneecap are off. This could be from lack of quad strength, from lack of hip strength, or lack of that single leg motor control that is needed when you are running. Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa. I'm a physical therapist that helps runners prevent and treat injuries. And today we're gonna go over exercises to help you decrease your runner's knee pain. So let's get started. These are exercises that are very specific for runners. So even if you're not injured and maybe you're just looking to prevent injuries, I recommend that you try these exercises out. The very first exercise that you're gonna do is called toe tap. So all you're gonna do is stand on one leg, Put your weight on that one leg, hands on your hips, keep your pelvis levels, so make sure you're not dropping your hips, and you're just gonna tap that foot out to the side, back at a diagonal, and then to the front at a diagonal. Now, to do this exercise correctly, what I want you to do is make sure you first have a good single leg position or stance. So you're gonna put that big toe and really push it into the ground on that stance leg, Knee stays slightly bent and butt stays back. So you're loading your quads and you're loading your glutes. If you just keep your butt tucked and bend that knee forward, you're not gonna get the most benefit out of this exercise. So make sure you really focus when you're doing this one. So big toe drives into the ground, knee is slightly bent and weight is in your quads in the front and your glutes in the back. you're going to do is called a dowel rod deadlift so you're going to take a stick I have the stick mobility stick here you can use a cane a swiffer a broomstick anything like that that's durable and all you're going to do is put it behind your back so one hand is on the top one hand on the back so you want to focus on three points of contact that the stick is making with your body the first is the back of your head the second is your mid back here and the third is right at that sacral area or your glutes, but more so right above your glutes in that sacral area or low back. So you're going to make sure the stick stays on those three points of contact throughout the entire motion of this exercise. So all you're going to do, knees stay slightly bent, keep the stick on those three points, and you're just going to hinge backwards. So really, it's a hip hinge. And that just means knees stay slightly bent and the first motion should be your hips going back. As you hinge forward and come back up. Now I love this stick because it really just gives you feedback on if you're doing this correctly. So if I am not doing it correctly and I'm rounding my spine more than I should, it might look like this. Versus keeping three points of contact, butt goes back, stays with that neutral spine, as you come up. This exercise is important because it teaches your body to load your glutes versus only your quads or only your hip flexors or only your low back. A lot of compensations can happen where you're not loading your glutes correctly when you're running. The third exercise we're gonna do is called a hip hike. So you're going to take a box or a stair step or just a book that you have and place it on the ground. And all you're going to do from here, I'm going to put one foot on that step, hands on my hips, and all I'm going to do, my knees stay straight through the entire exercise. All I'm going to do is tap that foot down by dropping my pelvis and then lifting it up past that neutral. So lift it all the way up using your low back and using your oblique. Lift up and all the way down. Lift up, all the way down. So all the motion is happening from your trunk and low back region. Make sure you're not bending your knees to do this. The fourth exercise you're gonna do for runner's knee pain is a split squat. 
squat. So you're going to take a light to medium weight and you're just going to put one foot in front of the other. Now when I do my split squats, I like to have the weight um, in the hand that has the leg in front. You can always change around with where the weight is. It just depends what you want to work on. So there's no right or wrong way to do this, but if you switch it up, you might notice it's working different muscles. So for runner's knee, I like to have the weight on the in the hand that has the leg in front. So in this case, my left foot's in front, right leg is behind, so my weight's in my left hand. All I'm gonna do, so the weight is pulling me to the left here, so I'm gonna push my big toe into the ground, make sure I'm pulling forward so I'm staying in line and not leaning to the left, and I'm just gonna squat down and up. Now with runner's knee, if you're having pain with any of these exercises, you either want to decrease your weight, decrease the reps, or decrease the range of motion. So if you're having pain with a 15 pound, try a 10 pound. If you're still having pain, just go in a smaller range of motion. You really just want to find what exercise is going to work for you so you can build up that load and adapt to it. That concludes the four exercises for runner's knee. If you like these exercises and want more, I recommend you check out the runner's knee program. 10 weeks of exercises that you can do at home that are specific to runners. Dealing with runner's knee pain, pain around that kneecap or pain right under that kneecap. I encourage you to check it out and I'll link it below.